Story time! Back during the Steam Next Fest, I made a video about some of my favorite up-and-coming roguelikes, and one of those games was Tendril. Lucky for me, Brute Farce, the game devs of Tendril, reached out to me to give me closed beta access to their game, and they let me stream it. And now with the April 30th release day coming upon us, I wanted to share with all of you what the game is all about, and some beginner tips so you can avoid dying as much as I did, because, well, I died a lot. So let's get started! Tendril is a tactical deck builder roguelike that has players commanding two characters from a roster of three heroes as of the closed beta. Each character comes with their own deck, and your team takes turns simultaneously with each other. The game features three acts, with each act fielding progressively more powerful enemies, elites, and ending with one of many bosses specific to each act. Tendril features a choose-your-own-path sort of deal, where players can opt to go for romps of non-stop violence for loot and cards, take occasional breaks, shops, or even event rooms where your character can gain smaller benefits and don't need to risk their health bars. Battle takes place on a grid, where line of sight and positioning can mean the difference of taking no damage and being in position to deal damage. Over the course of the run, you can add more powerful cards to your deck, use rooms to make cards more potent, remove cards, or collect relics that add loads of useful passives to make your character stronger. If you're looking for a comparison to other roguelikes, Tendril plays like a combination of Into the Breach and Slay the Spire. The most fun part about this game is the woven in synergy between the controlled characters. One character can't carry the run. Both need to be actively involved to survive what the game throws at you, but each character can take on multiple roles depending on what cards they take. As of right now, there are three available characters, the Dragoon, the Mystic, and the Phantom. The Dragoon is your frontliner, able to generate a lot of block and is chunkier than his compatriots. His main themes are defensive, being able to provide block, taunt, and even benefit from debuffs from enemy attacks. But that doesn't mean he slacks when it comes to dealing damage. When push comes to literal shove, he can bash enemies against terrain and move foes out of position. The Mystic is a ranged spellcaster, uniquely able to augment his cards or his allies to add block or strike at random opponents. His card choices make him a mix of support and damage, being able to buff his allies' cards, provide card advantage, and shoot single-target projectiles at a distance. While he can't take as much damage as Dragoon, he more than makes up for it in the amount of utility and damage he brings to the table. The Phantom is a mobile damage dealer, able to generate knives to throw and seriously damage opponents who are not targeting him. The Phantom makes no secret of what he wants to do. He wants to zoom across the battlefield, fling knives, and stab people. The utility he brings to the table is selfish in nature. He can stealth, give himself or his allies more movement, debuff enemies in the form of status effects, or force them to attack his allies instead of him. That's the basic rundown of the game. Here's some beginner-friendly tips to get you started. Tip number one, picking the Dragoon. The Dragoon's defensive capabilities make him for a beginner-friendly hero. He gives you a lot more room to make mistakes and protects your damage dealers while they do their thing. As you grow more comfortable with hero positioning, enemy behavior, and card selections, you can move on to try the Mystic Phantom comp, which makes you squishier, but gives you a lot more potential for big damage. Tip number two, take as many elite fights as possible. Elites give you higher rarity cards and relics if you beat them. If you are happy and healthy, you should actively take paths that let you take on these elites so you can escalate your power faster. Tip number three, use cover. Health is hard to come by in this game, and while there are rooms that can heal you, you can lose out on more upgrades if you take those rooms. Using cover to block line of sight and absorb projectiles is the most consistent way to avoid taking damage. Blocking takes up precious resources which you want to be actively using to kill your opponents faster. Don't hesitate to stand behind cover, even if it is to prevent minor damage. It does stack up as the run goes on. Tip number four, speed equals health. Many enemies in this game get stronger the longer the fight goes on. Since terrain is also destructible, the longer you let the fight go on, the more vulnerable you'll be as well. Your general goal for your deck should be to deal as much damage as possible as fast as possible so you can burst down fights before enemies start hitting too hard for you to realistically block. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate it greatly. If you like roguelike content, gaming memes, skits, and more, uh, please subscribe, and uh, I'll see you later in the next video.